Hey Premiere Pros, it's Paul Murphy here and today I'm gonna to show you a quick way to make a timer with any font, any size. Okay, so the most common way for creating a timer in Premiere Pro is to use the time code effect. But I actually find this quite limiting. For one thing, you're stuck with one font and also you can only make it so big. So what I decided to do was to come up with a quick way to create a timer that was entirely customizable. So you could change the font, the size, the color to anything you want. So let's jump into it, but before we do that, I will mention I'll make my project file available in the description below so you can download it and look at it on your own system if you want. Now, I just wanna say a quick thing about the sequence that I'm working in. The sequence that you start this animation in, it needs to have a full frame rate, and that means it can't have any kind of decimal in it. So for example, 23976 or 2997, you don't wanna start in these sequences. You wanna start in something with a full frame rate like 30 frames per second. You will be able to just copy this graphic over to those sequences later, but to start with, you wanna be in a full frame rate. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is create the first time in my timer. I'm gonna make a timer that counts down from one minute, but you can make it any time you want and you can make it count up or count down. So to do that, I'll go over to my essential graphics panel and I'm just going to add a new text layer and I'm going to type in one minute. I wanna make sure that my alignment is set to left. And I also wanna keep the font size relatively small, but you will be able to adjust this later. And then I'll just go and make sure that this is perfectly in the center of my frame. And once I'm happy with that, I want to duplicate this layer. So I'll go up to my layer stack and I'm just going to right click and choose duplicate. Now, the next thing we need to do is generate a list of all of the times in our timer. And a really quick way to do that is with Google Sheets. So all you need to do is go to the first cell and type in your first time, then go to the second cell and type in your second time. And then if you select these first two cells here by holding down shift, you can just click and drag and this will automatically generate a list of all the other times in your timer. And then I can just copy this by pressing command or control C, jump back over to Premiere. And in the top layer up here, I'm going to double click this to select the text and then press command or control V to paste. And now I need to add some keyframes to this top layer here. But before I do that, I need to make sure that my clip is long enough for my timer in the timeline. So I'll just zoom out a bit here and I'm just gonna make sure that this is dragged past one minute. And then we can start adding our keyframe. So I'll select the clip in the timeline. I'll go up to my essential graphics panel and select the layer that has our list on it. I'm gonna add a position keyframe to the very start of my sequence by going to the position and just clicking this button here to toggle animation for position. And then I wanna jump forward in time to the end of our timer, which is one minute. And a quick way to do that is to just go to my time code and type in one period period, and that will take me to one minute. And then for the keyframe that we wanna add here, we want the number at the end of our list to be in the same position as the number at the start of our list. And this is actually why we duplicated those layers earlier. So to do this, I'm going to select my layer with the list in it, and I want to click align bottom, and that's brought the end of the list to the very bottom of the screen. Then I'm going to drag the position of our list layer so it is above the bottom layer. And then with both layers selected, I'm going to click align bottom. And now the end of our list is in the same position as the start of our list. So this bottom layer here was just a guide layer. I don't need it anymore, so I'll press delete. And now we have an animation that looks like this. The next thing I wanna do is add a mask to these numbers. So we're only seeing one number at a time and I'm gonna do that by adding a rectangle. So I'll just go up to my essential graphics panel and choose add new rectangle. And then down the bottom, I'm going to check mask with shape. I'll just get my selection tool and tighten up the top and bottom of this shape a bit. So we're only seeing one number at a time. And now we have something that looks like this, which is not a bad effect, but it's not exactly what we're going for. We actually want each number to freeze frame for one second before it moves on to the next one. And we can do that with an effect that's called posterize time. I'm gonna go over to my effects panel and I'll do a search for posterize. Now, I should just mention that there are two effects that have posterize in the name of them. You wanna make sure that you select posterize time and then drag that onto your clip. And if I go over to my effect controls panel, you'll see that the frame rate for the posterize time effect is set to 24 frames per second. I'm gonna set this to one frame per second and that's gonna give us that freeze frame effect we want. Let's have a look at this now. 
And there you go, we've very quickly created our own timer. Now, of course, the whole point of this was to be able to customize this afterwards. And I'll just quickly show you how to do that. When you wanna make changes to the style of this timer, it's always a good idea to move your playhead to the very start. And also with the clip selected, you wanna make sure you turn off the posterized time effect. And now if I wanna change the font of this timer, all I have to do is select the text layer and I'll go down to my font list here and just choose something else. And that's changed the font for everything in that list. And if I wanna change the size of the timer, I actually need to adjust the size of the overall graphic. To do that, I'm gonna go up to my list of layers up here and just click the blank space here. So I have nothing selected. And now I can go down to these transform controls and turn up the scale. And I'll just use the position to drag this back into the center. And when you're happy with those changes, you can just turn posterize time back on. And here's your updated timer. And there you have it, just a quick way to create your own custom timer where you can change the font, you can change the size, anything you want. Don't forget you can download the project file in the description below. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.